Farmers Progress Days was started as a vision of a man named Elmer Lapp in uh, Kinders, Pennsylvania. He lived very close to uh, two uh, or three of the major manufacturers of horse-drawn equipment who were producing uh, equipment because the big uh, companies like Oliver and John Deere and McCormick Deering and those had, had uh, stopped manufacturing equipment that could be used with horses and some of his neighboring Amish farmers were producing some very, very impressive equipment in their barns and sheds behind the, the barns and uh, he decided it would be good for this uh, equipment to be demonstrated to groups of people who might be interested in using it on their farms. It's been very gratifying to see the growth of Horse Progress Days over the years. Um, in terms of, uh, of attendance, we've had highs of uh, probably 18,000, 15 to 18,000 uh, in Mount Hope, Ohio, and I think the crowd that was here in uh, Topeka, Indiana would rival that. With the interest that uh, has grown uh, in recent years in, in uh, eating locally and uh, more sustainable farming practices, uh, more, using, you know, more in tune with nature, natural kinds of approaches to farming, this has also uh, increased, I think, the interest in horse progress days from uh, agricultural people uh, outside the Amish communities. But the, the area that's growing the most is the local uh, food produce growing area where people are realizing more and more with the movement toward local eating that's a, uh, a, that is abroad in the country right at this moment. There are opportunities for, for those who wish to uh, utilize an acre, a half acre of land, two acres of land, small acreages for uh, potentially great profit. The, the bottom line is that it, it, the equipment works with horses. So the innovations, there is lots of room for innovations there, and, and that has been taken, taken advantage of as well. I mean, there's, if, as we learn more about what these manufacturers are building in their shops, we are, I'm constantly amazed at the innovation that comes from those, from those shops. Even in, in bigger farming operations, the investment that's necessary, that's needed for farming with horses, is so much less than an, a comparable investment for, for power with a tractor-operated uh, operation. Horses can reproduce. Tractors cannot. Uh, horses provide fertilizer. That's a beautiful system where the waste of the animal, when it's mixed with other decaying material can be put back into the ground to grow good, healthy food. What a beautiful system. Horse farming fits with the, with the philosophy of using what has already been put in the soil in terms of nutrients and feeding those nutrients and the bacteria and everything that's in there to make a balanced soil which provides a healthy environment for plants to grow. And Horses, I think, fit uniquely into that compared to tractors. And, and the pace of your life will be much more mandated by nature, horses, which are a part of nature. And the pace compared to a tractor farm where you can work all night, turn the lights on, cover hundreds and thousands of acres, it's an altogether different approach to farming, which I personally think is much more healthy. Hi, my name's Sam Moore. I do a little bit of writing for Rural Heritage Magazine about farm machinery. And we're here in Topeka, Indiana at the 2010 Horse Progress Days. We'd like to take a walk around and show you some of the new equipment that's here this year. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
Okay, this manure spreader from Frontier Equipment is new this year. It's a uh, galvanized side bed. It's got the old link, flat link apron chains. It's got the single beater, it's ground driven. And I guess that uh, from what I hear, this Frontier Equipment is a division of the John Deere manufa Manufacturing Company. So it seems as though Deere and Company is maybe getting into some smaller stuff now. They used to make nothing but big equipment. Looks like they're getting back into it, even though they don't call it Deere. And this was furnished by uh, Fillmore Equipment, which is a big John Deere dealer in the area. On the team, we've got uh, Steve Hostetler. Ponies, the teacher, Lloyd Schwartz and Sons, they're from Etna Creek, Indiana. They're green farmers. Uh, that's just a nice pair. They got all the red and white markings. By the way, This liquid manure spreader from Conestoga Manufacturing Company in, Lan in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania is new this year. It's 1,500 gallon capacity. It's got a 13 horsepower Honda engine on it. Actually, it's 1,100 gallon capacity. It's got a 13 horsepower Honda engine to uh, activate, to run the pump. Got a belt drive as you can see here, and it pumps the manure, the liquid manure, up that pipe, and then that nozzle there spews it probably 15 feet wide. It puts out a pretty good stream, as some of the people found out in the demonstration who were standing too close. Luckily, it was only clear water. It's got uh, one nice feature that that showed some thought of the people who put it together for the end user, put the grease fittings right up here where they can be greased real easily with a grease gun. Then the tubes take the grease down into the bearings. Usually they put the grease fittings way down in some place where they're hard to get at.
Okay, this spreader is new this year from Easy Spreader Company out of Sugar Creek, Ohio. It's 25 bushel. You can pull it with a lawn tractor, a pony, probably even a big dog. But anyway, it's real handy for a small hobby farmer that only has an animal or two and a couple acres to spread his manure on. It's got uh, the T T Link chains, which are very durable and they probably will never wear out. It's got a poly floor that won't rot out or rust out. It's all welded sides. It's ground drive. New this year from Easy Spreader. Comes with either rubber tires or a steel wheels. Did you notice the tailgate on that, how it works? It engages, it engages with the hand lever that When you puts pull it, the hand lever, it opens the gate, it puts yeah. It in the, when you engage it to put it in gear, it will raise the lever. Yeah, that, this one is another an optional end gate to keep the stuff from falling out on your way to the field. They're available in John Deere, in Red, International, and also in uh, Orange and Alice Chalmers. Alice Chalmers Orange. Persian Orange. Okay, Joe.
This is one of the most wonderful experiences that I've had. Uh, I came with the intent on learning about all the new innovations and, and modern ways to take traditional horse farming to a new level. Some of the feeling that I've had since I've been here is, uh, is a as a new person to draft horses and, and draft farming, it's almost uh, the same feeling you would experience as a youngster going to Walt Disney World uh, for the first time. For several nights in anticipation, I, I slept very little. I'd wake up two or three times and, and I believe I dreamed about plows and haymaking equipment and tedders and uh, the, all of the, the things that I would see and, and do once I got here. I would get on the Rural Heritage Forum the, the front porch and, and the, the people there have been extremely wonderful. I, I would ask various questions and you know I might have six or seven responses and then I'd have a, a bad day and I'd, I'd post a story about that and people would write back with words of encouragement because this is extremely hard. If I had anything to tell other beginners, um, it's not to be scared of it. I don't want to intimidate anyone. You can do this if you want to, but just go into it with your mindset that it's not going to be a simple cakewalk if, if you don't have somebody right there to help you, but you still can do it. So as I would run into various issues, people would write back with helpful responses. I'd go out and I'd try some of them and find out what worked for me, and it's been wonderful. And, and now I'm, I'm finally starting to feel like a more confident teamster and I feel like a true draft horse farmer. I do a little bit of farming, uh, skid firewood at the house and everything that I've done this year I did with a single horse as I just added the teammate but I, I plowed, I disc, um, I planted corn, potatoes, all the, the normal vegetables. I also cultivated all of my corn with the horse and, and then of course I do some recreational riding as well. But. Uh, Tommy Flowers has given me a lot of encouragement. He has two daughters and both have been extremely integral. I mean you can flip open a, a Rural Heritage magazine and see an ad and there, there's Tommy and his daughter together on the four cart and uh, that's the hope that I have with my daughter. It's something that we can share together and you know something that I can continue many many years uh, on into my life. So I'm looking forward to it. This little disc from DeCrone Farm in Ellsworth, Michigan is uh, new. It's just a five foot wide single disc. This particular one has cut out discs. It's available with either smooth or cut outs. The seat's just a standard seat off of a four, four cart. You don't need to buy a seat for it. You just take the seat off your four cart and slap it on this and use it. The lever angles the discs by sliding. You got to pull this pin, pull this pin and then the, the uh, lever will angle the discs. Just a simple little disc be handy for small farmers or gardeners. Probably need two horses to pull it. You might pull it with one, one sturdy horse. Yeah, 
this this is the other Esch manufacturing uh, no-till drill. Now this one sells for 18.5. This one sells for 18.5. Now what what happens a lot on these drills is uh, it's a piece that you wouldn't use real often throughout the year. So if you really don't want to make the investment yourself, maybe or maybe you do want to make the investment and then rent it out to your neighbors. That works really well. Uh, actually, it's a piece of equipment that you can grow. Horses, and they got a nice uh, set of whole seeds out there too. That one, and the harness, uh, the, the harness on that left, uh, right hind team there, they're made by Eastside Enterprises. Uh, you can get them for $890, but you can get $40 off if you buy these harnesses off the horses. Uh, and the collars are made by the road Collar Shop. They, they got a booth right over there, uh, close to uh, where the booth is. Now, Alvin, uh, you, I saw just as we were going now that he just raised the plow up there with the foot. He's going to put some of that residue into the furrow. And it's down into the ground. Yeah, those horses are not playing around. Farm Boy Manufacturing from uh, Middlebury, Indiana, put this tiller caddy, as he calls it, Farm Boy Equipment, they call themselves, put this tiller caddy together specifically to be used with a heavy duty tiller like that one there. That one's 93 inches wide, that's a Mashio tiller. They've been around for years, it's a three point deal. Anyhow, this caddy hooks behind a, a, a PTO power cart and it's got a, the lift to raise the tiller from the ground. It's also got these tines which are hydraulically controlled that can be forced into the ground. Now when a tiller operates the tines turn forward and that tends to push the cart forward. With a tractor, it doesn't make much difference, but with a team in front, you can imagine this thing would be pushing the whole rig right into the heels of the horses all the time. That's the reason for these tines. You dig them into the ground, and that slows the thing down and holds it back. And Floyd engineered the, the man who engineered this thing, his name is Floyd Bontrager, he's the president of the Horse Progress Days. He engineered this thing so that the tines, once they're set at the proper depth to hold the thing back when you're tilling, then they, at the end of each row, they raise along with the tiller and then they go back right to the preset depth. He said it makes it a lot easier on the horses that way. It's not banging them in the heels all the time. It's just basically just a thing to carry the tiller and to carry the power takeoff through with the tines to help hold it back.
went back to Uganda and he made these plows and uh, he's, he's built it up in his shop now. The materials that he has that he can find in the country of Uganda. And a lot of the, uh, the animals that they have to pull this plow are little burrowed. They're on Tillers International is uh, helping. I think I heard the numbers like their, their goal is to train 7,000 farmers in Uganda uh, to, to farm with, with this equipment. And uh, all over Africa, I think the young man who plow there is even from the Congo or Mozambique. Excuse me. Which, oh, yeah. He is an intern with with Tillers. Dulcie is up there uh, helping to guide the oxen today. She's been with Tillers for a lot, a lot of years and helps to keep the organization on track day to day. Um, so it's really special for us to have this plow here again. We had it here last year down at Nick Graber's farm, and Nick was instrumental in getting this this plow too. The U.S. Bob Acalo actually came to uh, Horse Progress Days last year, and he brought this plow with him from Uganda. But uh, he had it all taken apart and stuck in his luggage. Uh, he wasn't sure how he was going to explain to the customs officials that he was bringing the plow from Uganda to the United States and, and for, for an event like this. He didn't think they quite understand that, but it all worked out, and we're really happy to have that plow back again this year. It works pretty nice. Probably about a 10 inch bottom on there, maybe 8. And it's about the same size, maybe, as the INJ plow as well. That's another plow that looks a lot like this. And those plows, what we hear a lot at the uh, Horse Progress Day is people who visit us from other countries with zero feet equipment is too big. We can't use it. We can't use big equipment like this. We don't have an animal this big to pull the equipment. And, you know, we just can't use it. So here's the here's here is the notch plate and the, and the solid plate. That's Tommy Flowers out there on, the, on that disc there with his robots again. Tommy, a uh, long time supporter of the product. They really appreciate his support. And a real promoter of draft horse power in the South. He comes from Rackville, South Carolina. He's a captain maker of a lot of skills, a lot of different kinds of skills. Five dollars. That's just the Ridger part. Uh, it's on uh, one of their uh, 3.4 carts, and this would be uh, used on any kind of uh, crop where you want to okay, kill the dirt up around the plant. Uh, you can cultivate like this, or uh, where you want to kill the, uh, the dirt up around the potato row. Hey, this disc is new this year. This is from Frontline Equipment in Burn, Indiana. As you can see, it's an it's an eight ten foot double disc. It's got a raker bar on the back. They call it a spike tooth hair, which is an optional thing. Costs a little extra. It's got a safety platform and safety rails on the front with a seat. It's got a ratchet handle to raise it out of the ground to raise it up onto the wheels so it can be easily transported with the on the rubber tires it's all ball bearings instead of cast iron bearings which cuts down the friction it's a pretty nice looking disc actually that'd be good for a tractor farmer too except he'd probably want to put a hydraulic cylinder in there instead of that lift.
up and kind of rolls them over behind and so it's kind of let the dirt go down the roof and you paint a flame right on top of it so the ground so that you can pick them up. And uh, that looks like the mini road to come to the table. And this I don't have the sheet of those so they're hanging on them over there in the front of the equipment line. Miller's Repair Shop in LaGrange, Indiana built this disc out of an old tractor disc. Someone brought it in for repair, I, I understand, and uh, there was a lot of things wrong with it, so Miller's took the rear gangs off. This used to be a, just a standard double transport disc, 10 foot wide, and Miller's took the rear gangs off, the rear disc gangs off, and added the Danish spring tines, three rows of Danish spring tines, and then the rotary rollers in the back. It's a real good soil conditioner, kind of a dual purpose machine. The uh, discs and the tines stir up the ground and smooth it, and then the rollers in the back break up the clods. These are nice seed bed. It has a hand pump hydraulic to raise and lower it, so you don't need any uh, additional source of hydraulic power. It's got its own right there. All it takes is a little bit of pumping. Yeah, this plow from Pioneer is their footlift sulky. It's new within the last couple of years. Pioneer's been making a sulky plow for a good many years, but it was hand lift, had a big lever you had to operate to raise it out of the ground. This one is what they call foot lift. All you do is hit the lever, hit, hit the foot pedal, that drops it, and then when you want to raise it at the end of the fur, push on the pedal again, and it raises the, uh, raises the beam and the bottom out of the ground. This particular one's equipped with the Cavernland bottom, which is a bottom that's imported from Europe. It's got a, a more pronounced twist to the mold board that lays the fur over. It inverts the fur quite a bit more than the uh, Oliver or John Deere bottoms that most people in this country use. It's good for certain types of soil. A lot of people seem to like it. Anyway, this is available only in right hand. They, they haven't made a left hand plow in this particular foot lift model. But this is new from Pioneer Equipment in uh, Dalton, Ohio. Pioneer's a, one of the oldest horse drawing equipment manufacturers in the country. They've been in business for many, many years. They make plows and all sorts of tillage tools and four carts, motorized four carts. It's a big manufacturer.
This particular cold emulsion was put together by Byler's machine, Byler's Welding in uh, Holton, Indiana. And it's probably, gee, I'll bet it's at least 10 foot wide. It's a three section job. I imagine you could probably cut it down. The center section has the seat, the platform, and the safety rail. It's got three rows of Danish spring tines, two sets of rollers. It should work up the ground pretty well. In fact, I saw it in action. It does work it up pretty well. It's from Byler's Welding. Another cold emulsion. This one's called the Reliable. It was built by D.A. Hawk, Hawk and Sons of uh, right here in Topeka, Indiana. D.A. Hawk has been in business for many years making uh, horse-drawn farm machinery. As you can see, this is a pretty elaborate job. It's got the three rows of dainty spring tines. It's got a long row of uh, rollers in the back. It's just a typical cold emulsion. Raises and lowers by winding these hand cranks. That's how you raise and lower the uh, tines out of the ground. White Horse Machine out of Gap, Pennsylvania. Actually, they're out of White Horse, Pennsylvania, which is near Gap. Anyhow, they build this particular slitter, they call it. It's a, it's a tube, two tang slitter. As you can see, it's got points to stir up the ground deep underneath. Goes down to as much as 18 inches. And it's got sharp blades here which just slit the soil and don't tear the soil open. It's great for opening up uh, hard ground. It's uh, got a couple of quarters here to cut a slot for the ground, to cut the ground ahead of the tangs. It's got a, a battery, electric powered hydraulic pump for the lift. 
and the hydraulic pump just pull this lever and it operates the hydraulic cylinder and raises the tines out of the ground and in case there is any any ground disturbance if you, and you want want your ground to remain nice and smooth this roller will do that for you it's supposed to not really disturb the soil much, the surface of the soil. It's supposed to disturb it deep underground, which helps with uh, aeration and water drainage into the uh, ground.
Why do you like to come to Horse Progress Days? Uh, it's a great event. See all the new equipment and uh, meet a lot of people and uh, learn something. There's always things we can learn. We uh, mainly uh, raise beef cattle and hay. So we use the horses for raking hay and hauling wagons. And, uh, and then we travel in a covered wagon in the summertime. What do you think of this year's event compared to other ones? Beautiful. A lot of equipment. It's uh, and the weather is nice, and it should be a great, a great day. First time you lay plastic with a drip irrigation underneath it, and you get across the field and you discover that. Thank <laughs> you. 
highway planners have improved this over way, way over what the John Deere Company had offered originally for uh, for no jump planning. Next we have uh, the Ash No Till Drill. We have actually two of them coming in here. We have a smaller unit here. So that when you get to the end of the field and you're headed home, the uh, nozzles are right beside the sprayer. Some of these other ones that hold up straight up and down. This one does a fine job. Uh, again, only comes out on one side. Got the hang crank. This one is about two and a half feet. Great. We can learn. Yeah. And we'll be able to handle it under drill. And can you get quite a bit more on, on one piece of plastic? Now, this is a race bed player. how that lifts the plastic up. And then there's several ways that you can get, uh, get the plastic out of the field. Uh, you can drive a wagon along the side, sit on the wagon, and just pull it in by hand. Yoder with his Belgians on this spreader. individual nozzles on it. Now, as he, as he, as he cranks this up, uh, and as he goes by, you watch as the, uh, as the sprayer, as, as the water comes out, as 
we've got special produce nozzles on this. So they're going to put, they're going to spray water ahead of the boom and behind the boom, and that uh, that makes excellent coverage in the produce field on uh, on all kinds of uh, leaves. And of course, this uh, you can crank this up, and you can spray sweet corn uh, all the way up and down. Uh, spray it when it's small. If you've got problems with flea beetles, or Get into uh, tasseling and ears and spray for air room more and more. And and if you see see those nozzles that spray it up, and spray it ahead and behind, and, and you can see the fine pistons coming out there, making a nice uh, nice covering. Uh, it's got individual valves on it. Boop. 
comes out one side. Uh, 10% discount for the show model. This is, again, this is $5,200. You can see how that unfolds as it comes out. And then he can raise that move up. You can uh, really good coverage in, in the produce field. Uh, again, this is made by Iowa Manufacturing. And, uh, you know, you can spray, you can spray down close to the ground for three feet of balance, or you can spray it up. This finish mower is built by General Repair Shop, which is over in Ronks, Pennsylvania. It's uh, for towing behind a forecart, or it could be pulled by a, a small tractor or an ATV. It's uh, probably four feet wide, maybe five. It's got a Honda V-twin engine on it. And it's uh, electric start, 20 horsepower engine. And you can buy it with on either the steel wheels like this one is, or on rubber tires. Sold by General Repair Shop in Ronks, PA. This is new from I and J Manufacturing in Gap, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a nine-foot mower, which is kind of long for a mower, but anyhow, Jake Blank, who runs INJ, said he had some requests for nine-foot cutter bars on mowers, so he put one together to see if it would work, and it works, so now he's selling them. Anyhow, INJ put this together. It's got the nine foot bar which has the double scissors cutter bar knife and the way this works is one knife moves this way the other knife moves this way and as they pass each other it gives it a scissors action and cuts real well they don't clog up hardly at all compared to a regular single knife mower this particular one needs a power takeoff drive, an engine drive of some kind, or a power takeoff drive in order to operate. It's not ground drive, it's power takeoff. But INJ takes care of that little problem if you don't want to use an engine powered power takeoff cart. They've come up with this ground drive power takeoff cart. 
which is fairly new. It's been around for three or four years. But anyhow, this particular cart has weighted wheels and there's fluid in those tires and that drives a big, the axle as it turns, the wheels turn, and drives that big gear and it drives a little spur gear underneath there, pinion gear. That pinion gear in turn drives this sprocket. There's two sprockets there for two different speeds. Turns the power takeoff shaft which runs the mower. And this puts it in and out of gear just merely by tightening the uh, tightening the, the uh, chain. It's got a 12 volt hydraulic pump and of course the lever to raise and lower a hydraulic implement behind. It's a pretty ingenious thing. It works pretty good for, this is their light duty model. They've got a heavy duty model ground drive four cart as well. This particular one will drive the mower. It's great for uh, power takeoff rakes, hay tethers, uh, lighter power takeoff driven equipment. And it's quiet, you know, you, it, an engine cart is noisy, and a lot of people don't like that. This is a whole from INJ Manufacturing in Gap, Pennsylvania. This particular mower, which is a, an old-time McCormick Deering horse-drawn mower, has the single cutter bar knife. As you can see, it's got a single section here, it's sharp on both sides, and as the knife goes back and forth, it gives a shearing action between this fixed guard and the blade. That particular mower, knife on I and J has the two knives that slide back and forth together, both of them sharpened, and it just gives a much better cutting action than this one. Older McCormick Deering and John Deere horse-drawn mowers, they, these haven't been made by those two companies since the 1940s. But they're still good mowers and they're in big demand among uh, horse farmers. So anyway, that's what this one is. Uh, Mullets refurbishes it. Uh, puts all new parts on the nut blade or on the cutter bar. They put a dolly wheel in the front, which takes the tongue weight from the horses. And there's still an awful lot of these being used. This model, Inter McCormick Deering International Harvester Company made, the last McCormick Deering Moore International Harvester Company made, in horse drawn. And that was the number nine. The number seven preceded that and it was basically the same, but the gearbox was different. There were a couple subtle differences, and the six before that, it's just an evolution of their models. What's the pumpkin? That's the Is gearbox. The Did it used to be offset? Um, well, that the number, yeah, the number nine is further back. The number seven, I believe, is a little further forward.
Chemical Manufacturing from Maislick, Kentucky has put together this new system of handling small square bales. First up is the accumulator, which as you can see is nothing but a framework of square tubing put together. It's mounted on the front of a skid loader. It's pushed down a line of small square bales. It is maneuvered so that the bales slide into the divided framework in the accumulator and it holds eight or 10 bales. When they're, it's full, the accumulator is lifted, backed away from the group of bales. The bale lifter is also mounted on a front of a skid loader on lift arms, and it's lowered over the group of bales and Hydraulically, there's a set of curved teeth that are lowered and they penetrate the bales, grip the bales, and as it's raised, the whole bunch of bales is lifted at the same time and it can be raised to a height and set on a wagon, set on a bale, stack of bales, most anywhere you want to put it. Once the teeth are retracted, well, then the bales are left in place. Продолжение следует... 
I think draft power is the future. Uh, a lot of people, especially older uh, people in my community, they, they are, are warmed or touched, you know, that I'm still using draft power in their mind as a historical relic, keeping alive something of history. I feel like it's the future. It's sustainable agriculture. It's ecologically friendly. Uh, you know, as most people that watch rural heritage know, um, they, they produce no emissions. We can grow their own food. They produce themselves. They produce their own fertilizer. There's just so many benefits. Uh, another reason is for a small scale farmer like myself, especially a young farmer, without an extremely large budget, it's actually less expensive to do the same things that I would have been doing with an expensive tractor and all the implements to buy a team and it's a it's a lower price point to get into and, and plus it's a lot of fun I can't talk to a tractor so that's uh, been a real benefit